when I say seventh dimension, imagine that the seventh dimension is like the sun, like this bright being that is completely shining and fully aware of the divinity that it is and that within itself has the power, the light, the life, everything inside. But some part of it says, how can I be all this if I cannot experience all this? Mm. So a part of yourself decides to open your eyes and say, I will leave what I have within. Mm. And that's the explosion. I will get lost so I can find myself. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, creation of the sixth dimension. So it divides the power, the light, everything in different messages, frequencies that we call archangels. The archangels become the architects of reality, creating awareness, the fifth dimension, awareness of what it is, that everything is eternal and that you can mold eternity into different pieces. Which brings us to the third dimension, the pieces of time, past, present, and future, pieces of space, wide, high, depth. Mm -hmm. And all that, the only way to create is by duality, second dimension. So you need polarity in order to move time and space. Because if they don't spin, they don't create life. They need movement, love. So this movement will create that. So second dimension is the movement of polarity, which brings us all to the first dimension, which is, is the unity experiencing itself. Mm -hmm. But the only way to arrive to the third dimension is through the ninth dimension, <laughs> which is God, is the one that is not only in the center, is holding everything and understanding everything. It's like you with your body, being fully aware of the work of every one of your organs, of every one of your cells, of how your DNA works, is like if you become fully aware of everything that makes you be who you are. That's the ninth dimension, or God. What's the di I mean, there's, I have a lot of, we're gonna have to dive in here because I don't fully understand it entirely. <laughs> so first, I mean, one question I have is, hmm. what is, it seems like the first and the ninth dimension are very similar, mm -hmm. just a different expression of the same singular being yeah. or God, mm -hmm. right? It, uh, it's like a circle. So one and nine, they touch each other, like if they are the same. So one is like the core, it's like the center that cannot see everything, but can feel everything. Uh -huh. It's within. The one is within, is the one that says, I don't understand. And I don't even care to understand. So like the one would be the Atman, the, the part of us that's yeah, the, the divinity within. Yeah, it's the one that says, I am. I am. And um, what is this? I am. What, what is that there? I am. The unity, the first dimension says, I am. It's the only thing that understands. I am. It's like Groot from... <laughs> <laughs> so uh so that that's the <laughs> that's the way so the first dimension is like that it's, it's i am i am i am i am all the time yeah goes to the center and um the ninth dimension is the one that knows i am but can see what i am i am this organ i am this organ this organ is connected to this organ this time and this line time is this and that, and it can understand the whole. The unity, the first dimension doesn't care. It's mm -hmm. like a kid that says, yes, I am, I feel it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the person says, I can feel what you say, but I can get any word what you're saying, you know? So the ninth dimension understands every word, why you are saying that, mm. everything. Mm -hmm. And like the first dimension is a Pisces, Mm -hmm. And the ninth dimension is a Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like something like this. Uh, yeah. So no, I, I get it. It's almost like the first dimension is I know who I am. I am. Mm -hmm. And then the ninth dimension is I know what I am, which is all of the different, exactly. all of the different expressions, all of the different understandings, the way it all works. Everything. Exactly. So they touch each other because they, they yeah. are almost the same. So, but yeah. one is fully aware of everything that it is. And the other one just, it is. Yeah. So uh, in between that idea is how everything emerges. So everything emerges from the first dimension, of course, because I am. 
So, in this I am has a dream. And the dream of the I am is in the eighth dimension, which is everything is possible. Everything is there. And we enter deeper into the dream. Everything is possible here in my dream. So that's, that's the dream, the, 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 the great dream where all the timelines, everything could exist there. So the I am in the first dimension, when it sees the dream of the eighth dimension, that everything is possible, goes to the seventh dimension. So it goes from first to eighth and then yeah, down you, to seventh. Because it's all the same. It's not like right, linear. Right, right, right. Yeah. So we can explain it from the first going to the th second or the first going to the eighth. Yeah, no, I like this. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. So, the, so it has yeah. the dream of, whoa, opens its eyes in a way, like yeah. you said, and says, this is all of the possibilities that I am can be mm -hmm. expressed. It, every possibility the, the, the on easiest, every timeline. Yeah, the easy image is like you have one dot, which is the I am, and then it creates the infinite, which is the eight. Uh -huh. So you see Infinity the eight, symbol, you see yeah. how from the one you can go to the eighth dimension. So it's like infinite. Everything is there. Everything is possible. Eighth dimension. So then you you say, oh, I am this dream. I, I can feel that dream that everything is possible. And you become the seventh dimension. Seventh dimension is when you not only perceive and see it, but you feel you feel what you are able to be in the seventh dimension is that's why is the dimension of enlightenment is where where do you irradiate everything that you are mm -hmm. you say wow i i feel it i know that i can do something with this is so, this you use the word seraphims is this the yeah the realm of the seraphims exactly yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so Explain now. This is the part that I wanted to get back to because I still not. I still don't exactly understand how religion has twisted the understanding of Satan as a, as a seraphim. I guess right. Yeah. The 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 fallen angel he's called. Yeah. The seraphim mm -hmm. and like what that purpose was and whether there's other seraphims that mm -hmm. are of significance that did different things mm -hmm. besides what Lucifer or Satan did in the seventh. Well, that will take us to another to religion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but so, just like understand I know I know religion, you know, no, no, has its I, own no, thing. No, I, I will I, I will reach there when we are in the third dimension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the so from the first one you go to the eighth. The eighth says, Oh, this is what I can be? Seventh dimension. Oh, I feel it. I am uh -huh. that. Wow. Incredible. But what can I do with this? Sixth dimension. Oh, I can create. I can do stuff. And when I when you do stuff, you learn. So you become aware of what you what you've done. Fifth dimension is like, oh, now I get it. I understand everything, um, and I know that I can do this forever. Fourth dimension, I can change and create these things and these shapes forever. But um, where can I experience? Uh, because I'm I'm not experiencing what I can create. So third dimension. The third dimension is okay. I will get inside the system that I create, I will become that in order to mm -hmm. exist. But the only way to do it is to separate my parts because I am so huge that I cannot experience all together. I have to divide myself in many. Mm -hmm. So people, realms and blah, 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 all the things. Um, third dimension. The only way I can do it is through polarity. Mm -hmm. And because of this polarity, second dimension, is that I can create a third one, first dimension again. Mm. And once I created something new from all that path, I become fully aware in the ninth dimension that I am God. Mm. <laughs> so that whole system of the dimensions is how you see the universe in that perspective. So what happened? Third dimension. In the third dimension, remember, is about dividing. Mm -hmm. The sixth dimension was about creating, fifth dimension about understanding the creation, fourth dimension about knowing how to manage the shapes of that dimension, no time, no space. And then you leave time and space in the third dimension. So all the parts that you have created, now they become real. They manifest and they will live in a certain time, in a certain space. 
what makes that? That everything that before was part of one thing now is divided in different things. So you can tell the difference between this and that. Mm -hmm. But you cannot remember that they were the same thing. So this hand here, the right hand, will fight against the left hand all the time because they see, I know you look like the same, but you are the opposite to me. So that, w that shouldn't be good because what is good is what is similar to me. Mm -hmm. So that's the mentality of the herd. Right. Um, it's what we so, see now in our culture. Exactly. So you take one story, which is the sun, and you say, okay, there is the sun. Everyone can see the sun. North Pole, South Pole, Ecuador, everywhere, everywhere in the planet you can see the sun. But it's not the same to see the sun from the desert in Arabia than to see it in the rainforest of the Amazon. The, the sun will be very different. The shapes of the sun, the heat of the sun is different. So in the Amazon, the sun is not related to something that makes you suffer. In Arabia, it is. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Yep. So it creates a tradition that the Lord can make you suffer. Make you suffer if you don't do right. In the Amazon, the Lord would never make you suffer because it makes grow the plants. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it gives food. Yeah. So it's a willing and giving and, and, and all that. So why, why would God want me to get hurt mm -hmm. if it's giving me everything? But in the desert, in Sahara and Arabia desert, it will hurt you. Because if you don't take care of what the people say, any rules, you will die in the desert. The sun will kill you. So God will kill you if you don't follow the laws. Mm -hmm. So all the Semitic people now call uh, Islam, Jewish and, and Christians, they, we, they, they were all Semitic. They was the same people that lived in the desert. Mm -hmm. They all had that tradition of living in Babylonia, in Mesopotamia, in all that, that region. So all of them had this knowledge that the sun can hurt you if you don't follow the rules. So God, Yahweh, would kill you if you don't follow the rules. So they create a statement of culture, of all that, and how every archangel, every, every potentiality of God can be good or bad according to how you behave. Right. And that's how you form a religion that unifies villages. And they create one Semitic village called the Jew, one Semitic village called the Islam, one Semitic village called the Christians. Christians. It was not exactly like that, but I'm yeah, making sure. a summary of that. Um, but um, if you create, they, they create uh, this, and the most ancient one, the Jews, they said, um, we understood first what it means, the power of the universe. And we know that the word is the one that does this. So the word, the vibration is the one that changed life and that, that connects you to the divine. So they use the um, Kabbalah, the word, the letters, to work with the powers of God, so the archangels. The other ones, Islam said, no, God doesn't have any word. God is geometry. So the only way you can understand God is through mathematics and geometry. Which is why you see in the mosques the such exactly. beautiful fractal so geometry. So no words, no images of anyone, because for them the powers of God are geometry. Mm -hmm. For the Islam, it's not an archangel, as a person is a concept of a divine. Uh, and then we have the Christians, which is a different story that came from not Islam, that came from the Semitic people. Mm -hmm. They took the information from all the different villages, mainly from the Jews, 
they took all the ancient traditions, but without the, uh, the deeper understanding and meaning of what they really came from. So they took the ideas of this um, because Jesus was Jew. So they, they took the, the images, the ideas of the past from that tradition. But the people that start to follow the Christianism was not really students of the ancient text. They were just followers of someone new with an old tradition. Mm -hmm. So that's why there is a cut. The mm -hmm. ancient tradition, Kabbalah, Sefirot, is about the question. What do you think? What do you think is God? I don't know. What do you think? It's, it's all about questions, mm -hmm. questioning. Question, question, question to find the answers. And when you find the answer, ask another question. Mm -hmm. The Christians, not. The Christians is, this is the truth. Don't talk anymore. So that's why archangels are angels that they've, one of them fell down. Why? No, you, you should not question that. <laughs> and that's how for 2000 years, many religions in Christianity, like Catholic, Protestant, and many others, were based in ancient old stories that no one never explained them because they said you should not ask this is god's work 